So it's it's kind of nice. This is my first time uh, attending this conference, and it's really nice to see all of the different people from various backgrounds. Uh, so kind of in contrast to, to a lot of the previous talks, what we're really interested in in this um, and in this discussion, I, I apologize for these artifacts, um, are cyber physical systems. And these are pretty much as you would expect, you kind of interact with them every day, right? So this kind of simplest examples of cyber physical systems are elevators, uh, ATM machines, so on and so forth. And on the other end of the extreme, you know, we have very, very advanced ones like, uh, you know, air aircraft carriers. And so the problem that we're trying to address with this research is how to automatically identify attacks in these time series. And the, the overarching problem with this is that definite and total knowledge of normal behavior is kind of absent. You know, these are very complex systems of systems, and they're kind of built and specked out piece by piece. So when you put them together, this sort of emergent behavior starts to happen. Um, that's that's uh, totally unanticipated. And uh, many cyber physical systems are multimodal. Uh, sorry, we go back one slide. Are, are multimodal in in the sense that what's considered uh, what's considered uh, normal in one in one mode is abnormal in another. And so there's this kind of natural problem, which is learning to infer the natural number of modes. And, uh, you know, as, as we know from, from doing a lot of machine learning, that misspecifying this can, can have a lot of uh, consequences in, in terms of, of, of um, misidentifying things uh, such as anomalies. And so the second problem that we wanted to address with this research is that cyber physical systems produce a wealth of hetero, sorry, a wealth of heterogeneous data, um, continuous, you have altitude and pressure, ordinal, the floor number on an elevator, and nominal, so the commands and messages that are being sent on uh, throughout the network. And so uh, to my knowledge in this space, manual feature extraction is sort of the, the, the standard. But as we know, and we've uh, uh, discussed in a lot of previous talks, this is extremely costly and time consuming. And so what we're really proposing here is a Bayesian model to extract these um, attack events from, from all of the different forms of signals without doing this sort of uh, um, uh, feature and feature engineering work. And so this is a really, really simple example of, of um, a state transition matrix um, from uh, an avionics test bed. And we can see that this is, this is uh, very simple in that under, under normal operation, the system kind of transitions from uh, state to state um, going upward. But we can see that if we were to look at the transition matrix uh, under under an, uh, you know anomalous operation, I'll call it, we can see that you know there's a lot of different transitions that you wouldn't expect to happen, and the transition probabilities naturally are are are, are a lot more diffuse. And so uh, our proposal to do this to do this uh, identification is uh, something we've modified an existing model, which is called. Um, a hierarchical Dirichlet process hidden Markov model. And so um, I'll go back to this slide in a second, but I'll just try, try to describe this very simply. So this is a graphical representation of our model. And we can see at the very bottom is the data, which is represented by Y. And we can see that there's actually essentially like a two layer Markov chain where you have uh, the transitions at, at the data layer, but you also have these higher order states, which represent whether the system is an anomalous versus normal operation um, uh, represented in, in, in ZT. And I'll go back a second. And so kind of the, the flexibility of this is that if you've done this sort of non-parametric Bayesian analysis before, you don't need to specify what the natural number of modes are. It, it will actually uh, infer it from the data. And uh, it does this through the global Dirichlet process prior uh, and so on and so forth. 
And so the latent state is actually something that we never actually observe in the data. So any of any of the messages, so on and so forth, is is uh, is never is is not considered latent. Um, that's actually a uh, Y down here on the bottom. And I'll kind of just skip through this, but um, the way we do the actual inference for this is through a Markov chain Monte Carlo. And so, I'll, you know, I'll step back a bit. And, you know, if you've done clustering before, you might, uh, a natural outcome might be, what is the number of clusters, which is not really what we're interested here because it's almost impossible to validate or find any kind of documentation uh, from, from a system designer, which says that this is the number of clusters. What we're actually interested in is the detection event or the exact time point in, in the data stream uh, where the attack starts and where it ends. And if multiple attacks are happening, when they start and end as well. And so to try to validate our approach, what we're interested in doing is seeing when we detect these events, how well do they correlate with attack events. And because we have this uh, experimental apparatus, this test bed, we can do that because we know the ground truth there. And so one, one of the test beds is an avionics test bed, which is um, uh, which, which adheres to the uh, military standard 1553. And so this is kind of a really, this is a really basic one where you have a bunch of devices on a network uh, with a centralized controller. And so th these are the remote terminals, and um, they, they interact with the with the bus controller. And so an example of this are GPS receivers, autopilot controllers, flight controllers uh, for things like ailerons, elevators, and rudders, all sorts of devices. And so um, with this apparatus, we can conduct attacks on various components and analyze the messages and data that are being sent uh, back and forth to the to the centralized controller. And so, as an example, some of the some of the data that we that that we pass through to the to the inference is the message type, the remote terminal address, whether it was a transmit or receive, the sub address, and the mode code. And so for, for this experimental test bed, we co conducted a series of attacks and we can, see, we can see that these are things like denial of service, noise attack, uh, protocol violation, uh, buffer attacks, uh, anomalous traffic, atypical traffic, um, data payload attacks. And for the most part, uh, we, are able, we are able to detect um, the, the majority of the attacks. And you can see in the second column, this is the ground truth for when the attack happens in the time series. And on and the, the middle column are detected occurrence. This is the estimated time when the anomalous state is detected within the data stream. And then we have the uh we we, we have the scoring. And so uh, for the most part, we detect the majority of the attacks. Yeah, I would say that although there's a variety of attacks um, because we we kind of have only 17 entries. I you know I'd hesitate to show you uh, uh, precision and recall statistics, but for the most part, it's it's identifying it's identifying the uh, start of the attack pretty well, and uh, it's not included in this slide deck. But there is an associated detected um, end of the attack as well that uh, um, that uh, we do similarly uh, uh, an accurate job of identifying. And so that's one one example of um, a, a series of experiments where we evaluated the algorithm. A second set is that uh, we've uh, um, with with my collaborator, collaborators mainly, we've conducted a series of experiments on uh, on the uh, iRobot crate too, and so uh, we actually conducted um, two kinds of physical attacks uh, on this object. The first being blocking its wall centers sensors, and the second obstructing its tires, or uh, as as we describe it in the paper, an actuator attack. And so we can see that for the wall sensor attack, um, the first time series uh, shows the uh, wall sensors, uh, the, the light that's being reflected back um, and, and um, collected by the sensor. And we can see 
that in the you know the top row is the system under normal operation, and then if we were to rerun the same scenario on the bottom row, we see that the anomalous uh, white uh, white white um, state or mode emerges. And similarly, when we're conducting the actuator attack, we don't use the wall sensors to, to detect that, although we feed it into the algorithm. Uh, we um, The detection is primarily done through the current readings. And um, we can see we can see that um, uh, the attack occurs uh, right in the middle of the yellow segment, uh, which interrupts it and, and introduces and introduces this uh, red red attack um, uh, mode. And so similarly, we can uh, see the attack occurrence, and there's there's some uncertainty there from our uh, um, visual inspection of the data. And we can see from the detected occurrence uh, that um, the start and the end of the wall sensor attack is detected. Um, and for the actuator attack, we actually capture the start of the attack pretty, pretty accurately, uh, but we kind of failed to capture the end of the attack. So, um, so there is there there so you know there there are there's still some progress I think to be made to kind of uh, perfect the results, uh, but we're generally kind of happy with um, the the things that we've identified and also that we've not identified uh, too many spurious attacks. And this is just some information about MITRE. Um, I'll kind of stop it here for, for any questions. <laughs>